my worst fear uh, happened. Because there's no words to describe what, uh, how, how it hurts. There's no words to describe uh, losing a, a child like that. Sandra Stevens' family got a knock on the door on December 6, 2014. And at their door stood two Oklahoma City homicide detectives. They came into the house and they said, we're sorry to inform you, your daughter Sandra Stevens is dead. She killed herself. We questioned what happened and they said that she self inflicted a shot with a shotgun that she shot herself. My husband talked to him and he said that uh, that was kind of not possible because she never held a gun in her whole life. They were immediately suspicious of the boyfriend. They didn't say that out loud while the police were there. I mean, the news just had bowled them over and that's a really sinister accusation to make. Um, but his behavior after her death made them suspicious that he had something to do with it. He called them and Sylvia Stevens, Sandra's mom, was really struck by his tone um, and some of the grisly details that he reported without any emotion in his voice. Um, she was horrified by that and later thought to herself, you know, what kind of way is that to talk to a dead girl's mother? And like I said at the beginning, I really didn't understand well. I mean, it is, it is very hard to swallow that your daughter put a shotgun in her mouth because that was his words when I asked him what happened. And I said, I want to go see her. Where is she? And she said, oh no, you don't want to come and see her. She blew her head and her brain is all over my bedroom. I mean, who tells a mother that, even though that, if that happened? I mean, just cold. Immediately, the day they found Sandra Stevens dead, friends started coming and sharing their concerns um, about some, some various aspects of the relationship. Uh, some of Sandra Stevens' coworkers at the restaurant where she worked noted that he would demand that she bring her um, checkout slips home so he knew where she was that she he he had acu he kept accusing her of, of cheating on him so he wanted her to prove her whereabouts and really quickly after she died her sister and some other relatives started examining her social media accounts and again he was um, asking all the time prove where you are you know not believing her and uh, I mean he was stalking her uh, you know, is the way that a domestic violence expert would put it. Even though it wasn't physical, he was tracking her and he was controlling her. In Sandra's case, the abuse does what we call crossing social space, making her account as she moves through social space for where she's going, possibly how long she took to get there. These are fundamental rights and liberties which are being abrogated. And women tell us in half the years that these are actually, the restrictions on these rights and liberties are actually more important to them and more salient and more destructive to their um, sense of self, to their feelings of well-being than the physical abuse that they experience. No, I had no idea that he, that he, was, he was so controlling, that's right. And, uh, and after that, I, I understood several things. Um, I understood several things after that, reading, reading that, I just didn't, didn't have time. I just didn't have time to, to realize, but I knew she would not accept that treatment to her. Family immediately had strong suspicions that their daughter's death was not a suicide. And within three days, they'd set up a page called Justice for Sandra Stevens on Facebook. Frustrated? they decided to take their story public. Sylvia Stevens did several interviews with local TV media the same week that her daughter had been found. She does not outright accuse the daughter's boyfriend. She's just raising questions and saying actually that even though she had personally her doubts, that she believed in police, she believed in the justice system, and that she believed um, a better investigation would take place.